What you just heard me playing was a track I created to see if I could fit in the four most important, most fundamental, most basic drum grooves in 30 seconds or less. We're gonna take a look, but first, roll them. So what makes these grooves so special? Well, they work as a blueprint for the drums on any song. When I'm learning a tune for a cover gig, or I need to come up with a part for an artist's original, I always use relevant music as inspiration. Enter your streaming platform, your old vinyls, whatever it is, the truth is in the music that you listen to. And in my experience, these drum parts cross over all types and genres of music. All right, so of the four drum parts I played at the beginning, the one we're looking at today is called Four on the Floor. Now, if you're an experienced drummer and you know all about this, then don't worry. There's lots later for you to take your playing to the next level. But if you're just getting started, then follow along, no equipment required. Okay, Four on the Floor, here's how it sounds. You probably notice right away that it's got that low driving thump you hear in so many different styles of music. Think uh, 80s disco, think Beyonce Crazy in Love, Bruno Mars Uptown Funk, it's all over hip hop. Think Mac Miller's What's the Use or Sway Lee and Drake Won't Be Late. Well that thump is coming from the kick or bass drum and it's the lowest sounding instrument on the kit. While we're doing this we're going to count to four and you're going to stomp your right foot on all four counts. Try it with me, make sure you're counting out loud. So the next part of this groove is adding what we call the backbeat. And in rock, country, funk, it's usually played on the snare. Hip hop electronic music, it might be paired with a clap. So we'll start there. My right leg continues with the kick on all four counts and we'll add the clap on two and four. Okay, once you've got that nailed down, all that's left is to separate the hands. Move your right hand to your right thigh, and you're gonna play that along with the kick on all four counts. Move your left hand to your left thigh, and that'll replace your claps on two and four. All right, before we go any further, if you're just getting started on drums, then I'll say to you what I say to anybody who's exploring an instrument for the first time. There are a ton of really great online resources, but none are as valuable as having a teacher who's gonna work alongside you toward your goals. I'll say it again, I can't stress enough how important it is to have somebody giving you feedback in real time or at the very least, somebody giving you exercises and songs that are gonna keep you motivated. All right, on with the show. Now, if you've been playing drums for a while, you've got the four on the floor, you know how to play it, you're thinking this is super easy. Well, I'm willing to bet there's a couple subtle things in your playing that are keeping you from sounding like a professional. If you listen back, you'll notice we started talking about this groove with the kick drum. And the reason for that is how loud you play the kick drum dramatically changes how the groove sounds and therefore how the song sounds. Have a listen to me play the four on the floor groove while changing which drum is the loudest.
those were some pretty dramatic changes. But it just goes to show you how a simple dynamic shift can make all the difference. Give this a shot next time you're playing and see what sounds best for you. My preference is generally to have a good balance between the kick drum, my left hand snare drum, and to fit my right hand hi-hat somewhere in the middle. All right, if you've made it this far and you're still totally unimpressed, that's okay. I've got something for you that you're gonna chase well into your playing career, and that is variation in your hi-hat pattern. Whether it's eighth notes, 16th notes, played with one hand or alternating hands, broken 16ths, or any sort of ostinato, this is where you're gonna find the most variation between genres of music and also the most inconsistency between drummers. And that's okay, everybody's got their own voice, everybody has their own favorite grooves, but being able to unlock all the different options available to you will really help to inspire you when making a choice of what you're gonna play along with the song. The pattern that I use in the intro track, along with the four on the floor groove, is sort of a disco thing played with two hands. I'm opening the hi-hat on the off beats. Looks and sounds like this. Again, there's some wonderful resources available to help you explore finding variation in some of these patterns. I work with my students not just on subdivision, which is your eighth notes, your sixteenth notes, your triplets, but also your accents, your sticking techniques, orchestration, and actually finding places to apply these in music. That's all I got for you today. We looked at the four on the floor groove. Now there's three other fundamental grooves that cross over all genres. If you think you know what they are, leave a comment below. I played all four of them at the beginning. For more information about my teaching, my performances, head on over to ryanjohnstonmusic.com and we'll catch you next time.